Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? My name is Sergey. In this video, I want to talk to you about a problem that has been a big part of my life ever since I was 16 years old, and that is stuttering. I don't quite remember what triggered my little problem, stuttering, but what I do remember is that it took me quite a few years to figure out and to understand and learn how to deal with and live with my speech impediment. By the time I turned 24, 23 years old, I was able to more or less get this aspect of my life under control. No, I haven't got rid of stuttering and I do still stutter when I'm dealing with something that I cannot control. You know, when this situation is unpredictable, when I'm feeling stressed or when I'm around people or I'm in such an environment that makes me feel uncomfortable, I do get stressed and I stutter. But I just want to say that I think that speaking is one of the most beautiful things that we as human beings have in our lives. It's that instrument that allows us to create beautiful art and poetry and, and music. It's that instrument that allows us to share ideas, thoughts, beliefs, uh, inspire and motivate other people. And solve all those complicated problems that we as human beings deal with every single day. So whether you stutter or not, I think it's very, very important to get this aspect of your life under control because we, we as human beings, we talk a lot. It's one of our, I'd say it's one of our main instruments as far as, you know, life goes. And if you get this aspect of your life under control, you will be that much more successful in your personal life and in your career, your education, etc. You know, there's one funny thing that I will never be able to understand in my entire life. And that is, how the hell are all those other people never stutter? Everybody that I know, they never stuttered. My family, my friends, my co-workers, if they, if they want to say something, all they have to do is open up their mouth and the words just flow nicely. You know, for me, that has never been the case. If I want to say something, I really have to gather up my energies and focus and kind of like pre-think what I'm going to say, how I'm going to sound, and then it might work out and it might not. For all the people that I know, they have never had this problem. And for the longest time, I had been jealous. I was thinking like, yeah, I want to be as good as them. I mean, this it's so easy, but it never worked. Over the years, what I realized is that those people, they have some other things going on. They're dealing with some other problems that you, you and me, we don't really know. And I'm dealing with stuttering. I mean, it's not one of the worst things. I mean, it doesn't feel nice, you know, but it's something that you can work with. And the more I thought about it, the more I became confident that I want to get my speaking abilities under control. I want to be confident. I want to be a better speaker. I want to be one of the best speakers in the room, you know. And not only I did that, as far as I know, but I also became a better listener. I'm a much better listener than I, I'm a speaker. And so I think, you know, there are a few positive things about, uh, about stuttering. You might become really good at what right now maybe you're terrible at. I mean, think about that for a moment. So what are the things that I have been dealing with as a stutterer? Well, the first one and the most obvious one is getting the first sound of the first word of the first sentence right. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Every time I have to say something, as I've said before, I really have to focus, I have to like pre-think what I'm gonna say, and then it might work out, it might not. As far as I know, a lot of people, including myself, we use different tricks uh, to get that first sound right. I mean, I'm not gonna talk about this in detail. I mean, it's not that important. I mean, that's, that's, that's an obvious one. Uh, the second thing was doing a public presentation. I mean, that was a nightmare. You know all your material, you rehearsed it a couple of times, you know what I want to you know what you want to say, you want to share, you want to inspire people, you want to do well, but when it comes to giving the presentation, everything falls apart. You don't know what to do. You're sweating, you're stuttering, you're shaking, and what you're thinking, what 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 I was thinking about is that all those 30 plus people, 50 plus people, what are they thinking about me? They're thinking that I'm a terrible student, that I'm not ready. Uh, you know, that I'm a bad presenter, I'm a ter terrible presenter. And what really bothered me is that I thought that they thought that I was a weak man, you know, something that cannot uh, work under pressure. 
you know, because in the classroom, there were a lot of people who did excellent, amazing presentations. I was looking at them. I was like, wow, this is just, this is just quality, quality stuff. You know, I only wished I could do like 1% of that, you know, but so what I thought was that I thought that people uh, didn't like me, you know, but what I realized that had never been the case. Every time the presentation was over, I had never had a person that came up to me and said, listen, you did such a bad job, you know, you're a bad presenter, you should work on your skills. And by the way, go and see a doctor, something is wrong with you. That had never been the case. You know, people are nice. People try to be supportive. You know, if you guys might, might come up to you and they say, listen, you did a good job. You know, they're trying to support you. You know, they're trying to encourage you. So what I, what I took out of that is that people are not as bad as I thought they were. So I think that's, that's something that I want to talk about. Um, once again, when the Friday night comes, you know, people want to go out. Everybody goes out drinking, clubbing, dancing, hanging out. I mean doing whatever and um, it was quite stressful because I knew that I was one of the guys probably the only guy who would have some problems communicating especially when you meet some new people you know so every time I went out I couldn't relax you know I, I had to I, I was thinking about how I'm gonna come across and what I'm gonna say how I have to say that so it's really difficult you know to uh, you try to relax, but you're not able to relax and you have to relax because it's a Friday. So you have to let go of some of that emotional baggage that you're carrying right now because stuttering is all about emotions. It's about not feeling comfortable in your own skin. You have to uh, learn how to live in your own skin comfortably. And there is no one single method how to accomplish that. I mean, you have to choose your own path. And further in this video, I'm going to talk about two things that I use, maybe even one thing that I use to deal with my little problem. Um, also, going out for a date was uh, like, it wasn't um, as nightmarish and as given the presentation, but it was still, you know, kind of hard because you, you know that you can cover your stuttering for some, you know, period of time. But then when you start to get stressed out, you know, the girl will, will see that. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I have never had a, uh, a date that went bad because of my stuttering. Um, I, had, I had only one date when, there, when uh, the girl, she was making fun of me. So she would repeat those words that I, stutter, that I stutter, stuttered on. And, you know, I mean, was she a bad girl? I don't think so. She, she just didn't know what she was doing, you know, but all my other dates, they went pretty well. I never had a problem. Not a girl said, listen, you're, you stutter, you're not a man. You know, that, that has never been the case. Um, so what are some of those things that I can share with you guys to make sure that you can start work on your stuttering today? What I'm going to talk about is not something that you will be able to accomplish in a short period of time. Most likely it will take you a couple of months or, months or a couple of years to get used to because getting a new habit takes a lot of time. But I have to say this, uh, when I was thinking and analyzing what my body is going through when I stutter, uh, what my mind is you know, going through when I stutter, I realized one thing and it is this, when I stutter, I don't really care about my own feelings, about my own emotions and, and about the message that I want to deliver and about the value of the message. But what I do care so much, and this is something that I overdo that causes my stuttering, is what the other person is feeling. How they're going to react to what I'm going to say. I care about their own emotions, about their own comfort rather than myself. I mean, this is not normal at all. So what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to get into their head and to gauge, to analyze, you know, what is going on there. I mean, this is ridiculous and this is something that's very difficult to do and this is something that's not worth it at all. You have to take care of yourself, not the other person. I'm not sure if, you, if, if a lot of you guys are going through this, have been, you know, doing the same, but if, you, if this is something that sounds familiar, please write it down in the comments below because I really have to, it would be interesting to know how many people are, you know, doing what, what I'm doing. So this is, this is what I had to stop doing. I had to stop thinking about the other person. I had to, I had to be less more, I had to be more self-aware 
and uh, self-confident. You know, I ha I had to dumb it down. I have I had to care about myself rather than the the person in front of me. I'm not saying that you shouldn't care about the other person's feeling, and you know, and you you really have to sometimes you know uh, kind of like feel the the person out, understand where where they're coming from, but do not overdo that because that like for me that causes stuttering. So how exactly can you practice those things that I'm talking about? Well, I have said that you have to be honest, you have to be sometimes brutally honest, and you have to really focus on saying what you want to say rather than uh, thinking about what you want to say. And you have to care much more about yourself, about your own emotions, about your own feeling rather than what other people think. It doesn't matter, they're adults, so they can take care of themselves. So it's very important to keep this in mind. But also there is something that I do every single day of my life as soon as I get a chance. And what I, I, I call this uh, small in interactions. Every time I get a chance to interact with a random person, I do that. For example, I'm in the mall and I'm looking for some item. Option number one, I can spend another 10 or 15 minutes looking for that item. Option number two, I can come to, uh, to, to a person who works there and ask them, listen, I'm looking for this, can you help me out? So, you know, one simple interaction. I'm in the street and I'm looking for this place and my cell phone is dead. Option number one, you can spend, you know, another half an hour looking for this place and be late for the event that you were going to, uh, to attend. Option number two, come up to a person and say, listen, I'm looking for this place, I'm lost, can you help me out? You know, even if your cell phone is not dead and you can, you know, you can use the maps, still do that. So, if your friend has, uh, has just got a nice haircut and it looks amazing, and uh, as soon as you see him or her, go ahead and say, listen, I like your haircut, it looks uh, really amazing, how much was it? Um, I mean, just things like that. You know, if... And I'm not sure how this is going to be appropriate in uh, North America, but this is something that really uh, just, you know, doesn't, doesn't raise a lot of questions here in Russia, Moscow. Uh, for example, if a bank uh, teller has a beautiful manicure, make her a compliment. Say, listen, I like your manicure, you know, it looks really beautiful. Just simple as that, short to, to, to the point, uh, you know, she will say thank you. If I'm walking out of a shop and I see a dog, a dog that I like, that looks beautiful, I say to myself, even to myself, that's a good looking dog. Hey dog, hey, what's up? So this is what I do. I mean, some, you know, for, for some people this might sound strange and weird, but for me, not only it helps, uh, you know, to kind of like deal with my stuttering, but uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, all those little interactions, you know, they put smile on my face. And I think most importantly, they put smile on other people's faces, you know, because, yeah, this is something that I do to uh, keep my stuttering under control. Try it. The last thing that I want to say, guys, is that I have been watching uh, a few videos about stuttering on, on YouTube. I've been watching some people, just individuals like me, who are not interested financially. Uh, you know, people just share the stories, you know, how, how they deal with stuttering, what their life is, and they, and they give you some tips, you know, a lot of nice people, a lot of good, a lot of good original, uh, unique tips. Uh, there is one thing that I didn't like, um, and that is, I saw some coaches that actually tell you this, they tell you, buy my program, or, you know, pay for, for my program, get some lessons. We will make sure that you get you will get rid of your stuttering in just three simple steps. It will take exactly three days to get rid of your problem. You will never stutter again. And we will give you a lifetime guarantee. And the price for those courses is ridiculous. For three days, I mean, man, that's ridiculous. And so I'm very skeptical about that. I'm really, really skeptical because three days, it's, it's nothing. To kick an old habit takes a lot of time. If you have been stuttering for, say, let's say, I don't know, five years, man, well, you know, like if, you, if you've been doing something wrong for, you know, two years, it will take you four years to get it right. You know, that's a, that's a rule of thumb. So to get, to get a new habit, to get rid of, of, of old habit takes a lot of time. It takes significant amount of time substantial amount of time. It doesn't take just three days. So uh, 
I, I'd say do not believe that. You know, that's like uh, someone coming up to you and saying, listen, in just three days, I will teach you how to start your own business and I will give you a lifetime guarantee that this business will be successful for your entire life. I mean, that's what they promise. Those courses, they tell you, you will never stutter again. It will give you a guarantee. That's a bunch of crap. That will never happen. So just, uh, you know, be honest with yourself and, and, you know, think about it. Is this really possible? Is this doable? I really don't think so. But what I do think is that you can get rid of stuttering or not get rid of it, but uh, control it, you know, live with it, understand it and accept it. You can do this by yourself. And if you decide to work with a professional, that will definitely help. That will definitely help. So if you want to do that, go ahead. I think uh, it's it's the right thing to do. So anyways, uh, thanks for taking your time to watch my video. I, my, I wasn't planning to give you a lot of tips, you know, I wasn't planning to tell you my life story. So I just gave you, you know, that one specific advice about being honest about, about, you know, saying the words rather than thinking about them and caring about yourself. So this is something that um, stopped me from speaking normally. And so anyways, thanks a lot. Uh, good luck, guys. I hope you can deal with your little problem. Once again, it's not the worst thing in the world. There are some other things that are a lot worse, but I hope you can deal with it. You can live with it. And uh, I hope that your speaking abilities will improve and you will be able to express yourself however you want to express yourself and share uh, your ideas, your thoughts uh, with this world. You will be able to inspire people, motivate. And uh, yeah, so. Once again, thank you. So what would I recommend if I wanted to get this area of my life under control? What if I wanted to speak properly, to speak normally, easily, you know, and not having to worry about every single sound that I'm making? What if I wanted to speak more and stutter less? Well, a couple of years ago, I was making a video about stuttering. I didn't expect anything to come out of this video, but uh, as a matter of fact, I got, I got a few, you know, uh, hundred comments, you know, people were asking me for further suggestions, you know, people were calling me on my cell phone and asking how can I help them. So, uh, but, you know, this is pretty much all I could do just to make that video. I, I couldn't help them further. So at that time, I met somebody and that somebody's name is Alexander Degilevich. Um, and he's, he was a guy who was making videos on stuttering and how to deal with it, how to live with it. So I got to know him a little bit better and uh, what he does, he's been practicing this uh, for a couple of years now. He's got his own website and he helps people to overcome this speech impediment. So, uh, and you know, judging from, from his prices and uh, basically what he has for one session, that's two hours long, you would pay 2,200 bucks for four sessions that last more than four days, obviously over six or seven days, you would pay $1,000. For 10 sessions, you would pay $2,000. I think those prices are more, way more than reasonable, given what you have on the market currently. And uh, what I like uh, about Alex is that his approach is very uh, person-oriented. You know, his, his program focuses on what you want, on, on what you're dealing with, on what your issues are. You know, his, his uh, approach is not generic because a lot of those people who are, you know, coaches and gurus, you know, they tell you that you will get this, um, you know, individual approach, but it's not, it's not really individual if you look at it closer. You get this generic, you know, program that you can apply to anybody in this world. That's not what Alexander does. I've met a couple of his students and I have to say that the results before and after were tremendous. I mean, you know, people, you know, they came from not being able to speak to being able to speak freely. And uh, yeah, I think this is something that's really cool. Um, other than the fact that Alexander, he is a very decent person. I think he is very open and uh, I think most importantly, he is honest um, individual. So I would definitely check out his website. It's down below. There is all kinds of information in English. Uh, you can call him, you can, you can, you know, message him on WhatsApp. Uh, he will definitely talk to you. So I would recommend checking him out. Once again, thank you for your time.